Apple. Whether you're making images or videos, whatever it might be, you're in the right place. The Visual Lounge is about to begin live. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are and wherever you're watching from. I'm Matt Pierce, the host of The Visual Lounge, and today is going to be an awesome episode. So today, we're going to be talking about the best tips for creating and using images and video. But I talk a lot about those things and I thought, you know, what better way to do this than to bring in a bunch, and I mean a bunch of really awesome, creative, wonderful people who are gonna give you their one best tip. So this this could be like utter chaos as we bring them in and take them out and let them, let them say their stuff, but we're gonna go at it today because I think it's really important that we hear all these really great tips together. They're not meant to be linked in any way, but we're gonna go through them. So we got eight different guests, we'll introduce them as we go. And it's going to be, it's just going to be a lot of fun. But before we get to our first one, I just want to remind you that the visual lounge is going to go on a six week hiatus. We're going to take six weeks. We're going to rethink the show. We're going to think about all the things that we want to share with you and how we can do that a little bit better, be it, make it a little bit easier to watch, easier to listen to so that you want to keep listening. So in that time, can I make a suggestion? If there's something that you really love about the show or something you wish we'd change about the show, email us. Contact us, reach out to us any way you can. You can use smoke signals, you can use uh, emails, a really good one, thevisuallounge at techsmith.com, the visual, visual lounge, all one word, at techsmith.com, or you can find us on social media at techsmith is pretty much any social platform you want to be on. You know, let's see, LinkedIn, you want to be on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. Yes, we are in all those places. So you reach out to us and let us know what we can do to make the show even better. So, with that said, take a deep breath because we've got eight guests. We're diving in. We're going to bring on our first guest and he's a familiar face. Someone that you probably recognize if you've been watching or listening to the show at any time. If you've been listening to the show, you might recognize his voice. It is the awesome Andy Owen. Hey there, Matt. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> You're just staring like a deer in a headlight. Like, oh my gosh, he brought me back. <laughs> who knows Why me? Did he People bring me know back? me? Oh no. Yeah. So Andy, That's real usually... quick, for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about your role and what you do. Yeah, I'm the social engagement and video manager here at TechSmith. So uh, I'm in, in charge of the social and video teams, uh, and I myself participate a lot in the YouTube work that gets done. So uh, that's kind of what we do. I do product videos, all sorts of all sorts of video related work at a video related company. Very meta. Very very, very meta. meta. Super super hard to talk about. So Andy, today the concept is that we're bringing on, uh, there's eight of you, we're gonna, we give you a couple of minutes to talk about your number one, like your, what one thing that you consider your best tip uh, for creating or using images or video. And so we've introduced you, now let's yeah. dive in. Tell us about what is this tip that you want everyone to know about? Yeah, um, I, I had one tip and I'm gonna change it to a different tip. It's, it's composition. Um, you control what your viewer sees. I talked about it on a LinkedIn post that I did recently, and I think it's important to know, I am currently in my basement, but you don't see that. You just see the corner that I've lit with my magenta light, which is just, you know, if I turn it down, it's a little bit bluer or white in the background. Uh, and, and Matt, like your set, you control what people see. You've got the cool helmet and the TechSmith pillow and your bobblehead. And so- I can so, change the color. And exactly. Pick, we're pick we're color. very in control. Uh, and, and for me, that says a lot about what you want your audience to see, right? Like, I don't want them to see, right? There's that purple. We match. We look good now. Uh, we don't want our audience to see the messy desk around us, which my desk is a mess. There's like four empty LaCroix cans just, just in front of me, which is very upsetting. And I just realized that now, but I don't want people to see that. I want them to see a clean background. Maybe I'd even put up some shelves and have a couple of toys. It's a little unfinished, this basement of mine, um, but we're getting there. And, and so I'm going to control and I'm going to just have the focus be on what I want it to be on, which is me. And you and I both are doing something called the rule of thirds. Uh, now Matt is using the upper rule of thirds, where if you split the screen into three lines. Imagine a tic-tac-toe board across the screen, right? There's two horizontal and two vertical lines. His eyes are on that top line. You don't want your eyes in a square of the tic-tac-toe board, right? So if I'm, all right, let's see if I can line myself up. I don't want my head centered. There is something about what we've seen from television and movies that has just gotten us accustomed to these rules of thirds. So if I'm off a little bit, that's good. It gives me a little room to talk to, kind of like if there was a comic book word bubble right here. It gives space for my speech. So um, there are all sorts of ways to kind of align yourself, to be pleasing to the eye, 
and you're in control of all of that. Whether you've got a crummy webcam that you don't like that much or a great mirrorless, you can still have a bad angle and you can still have a good angle. Yeah, and I will say one one of the challenges in uh, the live format that we're dealing with here is like that because normally I'm in complete control, but mm -hmm. like Andy, you're in less control because I actually can move you right. around a little bit. Like I can really kind of if I kind of how I, depending on how I place your box because we're also cropping here, we're doing some other stuff. But it's but you're absolutely right. I love it. And it makes me think of Cassie Labori's tip. Uh, no, not sorry, not Cassie Labori. Uh, Diane Howell's tip about, and I don't remember all what it stands for, but bleach. Like in your, when you're thinking about your background, you want to bleach it, you know, and that's like thinking about all the things that are in your lighting, everything that's around you that makes, it makes a big difference. Absolutely. Yep. Everything is in, in the film world, it's called mise-en-scene. It basically means like you're in control of everything in that scene. So do with it what you will, but nothing in a film especially is there by accident. So you can do a little bit of the same at home. Very fancy. Mise en scène. Mise en scène. You know, it's uh, it's interesting. My my ten year old is really into. We're, we love the Marvel shows, and we've mm -hmm. been watching the Easter the shows that talk about all the Easter eggs and things like that. And yeah. it's been super interesting to see all the things that are in the background that just have a have a place, and it's all it all has purpose. So I, I so I love this tip for that. Uh, very good reason that we are, you are in control, make it the way yeah. you want it to look. Absolutely. And I mean, animation, especially if you think about like the old Pixar, you know, Pixar always was hiding like the number a one, one, three from their old college, you know, art classes in every Pixar movie, you'll see a one, one, three. It's in some other things too. Uh, and people used to think like, oh, it's just a coincidence. Like, oh, that's just the, no, everything is intentional. Now, of course we're on a much smaller scale with the webcam and at home shows, or even like at work at our office, but what are you showing your audience? What do you want the message to be from your scene, from your little view? What do you want them to know about you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Andy, thank you so much for joining me. I know you've got a busy schedule today, so you're going to have to bounce here, but that's okay because guess what? We've got our next guest is in the queue and waiting. And so awesome. with that said, we're going to bring on uh, Andy. Thank you so much here. Let me switch. Yeah, thanks, to, Matt. We'll get Andy, let Andy go to his meeting, but we're going to bring on our next guest here. Uh, and make sure I get this all set up correctly because, you know, <laughs> I'm doing a lot of switching here and I'm not sure that it's all going to be good. So, Andy, you can just drop off. That's, that's all right, cool. See ya. Uh, we're going to get switched this to our guest. Next guest, maybe. There we go. It's <laughs> Trisha Ransom. Trisha, welcome to the Visual Lounge. Hi, how are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, for those who don't know you, we've gotten to know each other well over the last multiple years. Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. So um, my name is Trisha Ransom. And yes, the last name is just like the kidnap note. Um, I've been, <laughs> and you wouldn't be surprised at how many people still misspell it. It's, it's amazing. I've been in the L&D field, I don't want to say how many decades, but it's more than one, shall we say. I put an S at the end of that word. Um, I've done everything in, in the L&D field, from being a team of one to being part of, you know, a person that's on a training team of 30. I've done e-learning, facilitation, LMS administration, virtual training, um, my own voiceovers, which, eh, um, video, it, you name it, I've done it. So. That's awesome. me in a very quick nutshell. Well, we love it. And we're so grateful that you could take some time out of your, your, your busy schedule to come work with us. So Trisha, you know, the premise of today, is it is your one yes. best tip for creating images and video. So why don't you lay that tip on us and then we'll, we'll go from there and have a little short conversation about it. So I'm going to go a little different than Andy, like a total you turn from Andy. Mine is about not being so perfect on screen and not having the set so perfect. I'm talking mainly, and this does not work in industries, I was thinking about this, that are highly um, regulated, like pharma or whatnot. But let's say you are in um, trying to do a sales training or something, and you want people to uh, have a specific sales message, you know, your, your statement, then you want them to say it and practice it. So having a video of actual people actually saying those words or trying to say the words is so powerful, especially when you show that it's not perfect and it does take practice. And um, having the real life background and sounds and noises also helps make it transferable back to uh, 
back to the desk when they leave, however they're watching the video. And my favorite thing to do is to include a blooper reel at the end because it just makes it so real. It makes it relatable. And people can see that, no, they're not going to be perfect the first time they do whatever it is you're showing because you really aren't. You have to practice. So that's my, my very quick tip. Well, I, I, I love it. And, you know, it's interesting. I don't see that yours and Andy's really conflict, right? Because even in a real <laughs> setting, we like if you're showing a real world, we still want to control what's there, right? Because we, we want to eliminate yes. those distractions, wow. things that are unnecessary for understanding. Uh, but but still, I love that because the real settings, real people, um, it's very relatable, right? Saying and, um, whatever it is you need to say. And using your phone to capture it or their phone to capture it. Um, we have video at our fingertips. It's not like I hate to age myself, but when I was a kid, <laughs> there wasn't even camcorders when I was a kid. You had to have the, those great big like Bugs Bunny kind of uh, um, cameras. So having this whole video thing at your fingertips and people are so much more comfortable being on camera now than they were when I first got into this field because everybody has phones and their videos are being taken of themselves all the time. So since you have that equipment there and your learners do too, why not ask them, you know, to come in to be part of the process? And yeah. Well, I think there's something to that too, right? We relate when, if it's, if I'm seeing my peers or people that I know or people that I know that are like, Oh, I understand. They, I understand who that is. Like that's a real person we can relate with that. Whereas sometimes, and, and not to say that you should never use actors because I think there's place times and places for that. But like, I like relating to people. I like feeling like, Oh yeah, that's a, that's a real person in a very real situation that maybe I, I can better empathize or better relate with. So I, I love this tip. Yeah. That, that, I mean, it, it is so wonderful and it's so easy and, and it makes um, when people are watching it, it, it makes it more fun for them, right? And and like I keep saying, it makes it relatable. They are drawn into the world because it is their world and it's what they know. And yeah, it makes your message in some cases stick much better. Now, I, my caveat, because I worked at a biotech company and a pharmaceutical company, there are some industries where this just, you just don't want to go down this path. You know, so be very mindful. <laughs> But it's an option for a lot of things. Absolutely. Well, Trisha, thank you so much for providing this awesome tip. Are you going to stick around for a couple minutes? Sure. Awesome. So sure, we're going we're gonna to bring in our next guest, and we're, we'll, we'll we'll just all be on camera here. And uh, thank you again. This is an awesome tip. Uh, so we got some strong, strong tips out of the gate. Let's bring in our next guest. He's another TechSmith employee. He uh, creates a lot of our tutorial videos for Camtasia. So if you've watched a Camtasia tutorial in the last, I don't know, a couple of years, you've probably seen and heard Jason Vlad. And so let's welcome Jason to the Visual Lounge. Hey, Jason. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Good. Welcome. We got Trisha here with us today. So Hey, Trisha. Pleasure to meet you. It's like we're, we're just getting to know each other. It's the big soup mixing pot of all the people that I know and work with in, in this awesome world. So, uh, Jason, we, we've had some really great, strong video tips about being on camera. Um, you know the deal. You get you get a couple minutes for your best one best tip. What are what are you going to share with us? So a tip that I will admit I don't always follow, and that's proper preparation before I'm going to be on camera or do, I do a lot of live webinars, right, man? Like the Visual Lounge, we do a lot of broadcast stuff. So there's a simple checklist that I've got sitting on my screen that I need to be a little bit more disciplined in following, starting with turn off all your screen notifications, right? We can use Slack here internally. I've got different messaging apps. Just pause them, silence them, or even better, completely shut them down because I don't want to have to edit those out of my recordings later. I don't want to be casually glancing down to the corner every time I'm supposed to be looking at the camera wondering, whoa, what was I supposed to take care of that? So eliminating distraction is far. Yeah, I've been there too. Yeah, I've been there too. Uh, another thing I've actually done more recently because our team, as you said, we make the tutorials as well for Camtasia, Snagit and whatnot. And that is the idea before I go live or before I record a video, I've uh, started the practice of scaling up my screen size. 
So I work on large monitors and it's okay for my eyes, but when you're looking at something as detailed as a user interface, a video editor, something like that, scaling it up, even though it might feel uncomfortable for you as a user, it looks spectacular for those attending the broadcast so they can see the detail. Uh, you don't have to repeat yourself often because all of it's in great uh, vivid color, vivid size. People can really uh, take all that information in. Uh, another tip about that proper prep is room noise. This is something I've actually learned from Matt about eight years ago was the idea of uh, you know, closing my windows, closing my door, putting the curtains closed, anything to dampen the sound, uh, knowing the uh, my hang loose method, which I know just came out in a video you did recently and one that Andy did recently where my mic is just off camera, but it's about six to eight inches from my face. Um, I know what it sounds like, and I'm quick to hear if it's a little hot or a little too quiet. So uh, setting myself up for a good room noise. Uh, lighting. Lighting here is iffy right now. I don't have all the lights turned on. I do have a little bit of a hair light sitting here just off, off wait, camera. Wait, 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 wait. I don't think we need – that's the wrong name. Hair light's the wrong name for you and I. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go with kicker light. It's a kicker light? <laughs> for for the podcast listeners, Jason and I are both uh, challenged in the follicles on, on the top of our heads. So. Very much so. There is a gleam coming off of it, a sheen, so to speak. Yeah. So, so the hair light is forever now known for Matt and I as the kicker light. Unlike Andy, who's got a fabulous head of hair. And we'll, we'll discuss that another time. And uh, last but certainly not least, with all the preparatory stuff you could do, is double check the visuals you're going to be using. Uh, if you're going to be using a video playback, make sure it's in the correct format. Make sure it's sized right. Make sure the audio is working okay. Uh, if you're using still imagery, make sure the coloring's right. Make sure it's in the folder you thought it was. Uh, if we're talking about Camtasia, I will build a library before I do this so that I've got everything combined in one place. It's kind of like my uh, my cooking analogy. I always know what's in the pantry if I wanna make chocolate chip cookies because I put it there. I know what's on what shelf. Same with the videos. I want things in the right folders named correctly so I can just confidently grab them and not ever get out of the, uh, the pacing or the realm of what I'm uh, delivering. So those are my prep tips. Awesome. So, so I'm, I'm curious with Trisha here, cause you just heard all Jason's tips. I, I, did any of those resonate with you, Trisha? Oh, yes. Uh, at one job, I had to do videos uh, teaching our customer how to use soft our software. And um, yeah, so having all of the images, knowing exactly where you want to move that mouse and actually practicing moving it so it doesn't jerk up and down, I, I the preparation, I can't say enough. I learned the hard way. I didn't listen to all of you guys' tutorials before I jumped in <laughs> and started using the software. So if somebody else can learn from my pain, preparate, prepare, and practice, and practice. Yeah, well, Trisha, you're gonna we're gonna blow your mind here in a second. You can stop practicing because of a new feature in Camtasia. It's, you can now uh, uh, yeah make the cow mouse cursor go wherever you want it to go. <laughs> yep, <It's> super easy. <laughs> yep, cursor so path where, editing. It. We, we where just saved you hours five of practice. Five years ago, five we're, we're years. working on it. We're trying. We're trying. Well, thank I, you. That's a wonderful. I, well, I'm just gonna say uh, of the tips that Jason you shared, the one that I think is really important is the scaling up your resolution on your monitor. It, it is uncomfortable but I, you really do get better output at better looking mm -hmm. looking videos so i think those that's those are all awesome tips uh and i can't thank you guys enough for coming on and being willing to share with us those tips because uh you know if we stopped the show right now i think everyone would be like okay i've got some things i can work on and do but i'm i'm so crazy <laughs> it feels like this is my crazy moment I, we're gonna keep going uh, so thank you, Jason and Trisha, for joining me. We're going to actually, our next guest, um, unfortunately, he had an, a, a prior commitment, was so excited to be willing to do this that uh, he said, you know what, I'm, I'll make you a video, Matt. And we're fans of video, so we're going to we're gonna queue up uh, Joseph Suarez, our good friend Joseph Suarez, and we're going to hear what Joseph had to say. Trisha, if you want to stick around through the video, you're welcome to stay as we go through this. So let's hear from Joseph. Hello there, my name is Joseph Suarez. I'm a learning experience designer, and my tip for creating or using visuals is to stay consistent. Whether you're making a video, a presentation, an infographic, an e-learning course, really any digital asset that's visual in nature, you wanna choose a visual theme to use throughout and stick with it. Now, by visual theme, what I mean is not just the uh, fonts and colors and things like that that might be established in a template or an organization's 
branding guidelines, but also all the use of photos, illustrations, icons, shapes, etc. So whether you are finding those assets on your own or you're creating them, it, this will apply just the same. For example, if you chose to have a futuristic scene that's kind of cartoonish with very vibrant colors, think of like the Jetsons, right? You wouldn't want to then include things that clash with that, which would be like things that are more photorealistic or muted colors or like corporate office settings and things like that. Um, those wouldn't work well together. The same thing goes with icons. So you could use some icons that are very minimal in nature. I'm thinking of like uh, a one color stroke or outline of something like a hammer, a very simplistic representation of that. Or you could go all the way up to a more photorealistic, almost like a 3D rendering of a hammer. Um, either is fine. You just want to stick with that when you choose all of your icons. And the good thing about icons in particular is you can usually find sets of icons together that when you're downloading resources from places like uh, Envato Elements and, and other resource sites like that. The important thing to remember is that you're communicating visually with the theme that you choose in your video or whatever asset you're creating in a similar but different way to how you're communicating with the dialogue or narration in your video or, or whatever you're using. So that's my tip for the day. Stay consistent. I want to thank Matt for having me on today and uh, apologize for not being able to be there in person. Thanks. All right, what a great tip from Joseph. We're we're so we're so grateful for him making that video. So I guess Trisha, between you and me and all of our friends that are, are listening today, consistency. Do you do you find that this is a challenge as you make videos? It's my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> I'm the person that watches the video. I'm like something jumped, it jumped. Now it's back. It's jumped. That's what I focus on. I I I don't know why, but. Um, Yes, what he's talking about, it's so easy to forget, right? The, that that consistency, the consistency in, in text boxes or shapes, you know, are you going with rounded edges? Or are you going with sharp edges? Um, the whole make all your icons or images, if you're downloading them or getting them from a site, just get the whole set. It, it, trust, it will make your life so much easier. I, I agree with every word he said. Yeah, it's so important. It's so important. And what I'll, what I'll just add to it is I think, Sometimes it's, it's in, in lots of video uh, and not just icons and fonts and colors, but it, in any design, it's really easy to say like, oh, I'm going to add one more thing. I'll, oh, one more font won't hurt. One more color won't hurt. And it will. It absolutely just messes everything up in video where I see the inconsistency is, as like you said, with like, you know, uh, going from a square to rounded rectangle or something like that. The shapes, the, the weight of those, those icons. Um, I also think in transit, like in transition, like you're putting it in transition. Oh. Well, now I'm going to use yes. the the star the star wipe. Now we're going to use the clock wipe. Now we're going to use no. the fade. Now we're going to fade. No, wipe. it's like no. one. You get one. <laughs> one. Maybe two. One. Maybe two if you got a really good purpose and your name starts with George and your last name starts with <laughs> Lucas. Ends with Lucas. So Star Wars, Me. right? <laughs> I would also say, as I was listening to him talk, um, if you're going with the script or or you have um, audio, if make the tone of it carry through so if you start off and people are you want you want it to be kind of edgy you know and and more geared to like slang or whatnot um carry that all the way through and not only that make sure that everything else supports it so if you're going with like those you know the more edgy kind of slang urban kind of thing make sure that the visuals aren't like an artistic um artsy you know I've, I've lost my words, but you know what I'm trying to say, unless you want somebody to focus on that very moment, because then that dissonance will capture their attention. But I, I'm a, I love consistency. Yeah. And it's, it's easier to break it and not be consistent than it is to be consistent sometimes. So I love his advice, you know, get the, get the whole pack. And, you know, he mentioned a site in Vado that you can get packs like that. You can get those from uh, TechSmith asset library. You can get those kind of wherever you're going. I, I think that is, that is, can be a challenge if you're, if you're not creating it yourself, not that everyone has to create it themselves, but to go and find those things. And then 
what you do, here's a tip uh, for me is go and build your library, whether it's like actual Camtasia library or just a, a drive where you're like, here's all the things that I use and revisit those in the next video. And cause the temptation is like, well, this video will be this way. And then this video will be this way. And then the 10th video is going to be even more different. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> things should go, things should be coming together and looking consistent across the series, special. across the videos, across the organization, not just yeah. a video singular. So, yeah. I mean, you don't want to put that cognitive load on people watching to learn a whole new, um, I heard, I was watching um, some masterclass. My husband, you guys, is a professional photographer, so I get a lot of this stuff. Um, but they were talking about making people work to understand your photographs and the shorthand. They were talking about filmmaking, a shorthand where the the uh, director will use certain angles and certain shots. And when you see a shot that's pulling back and going out to the, you know, going out to nature in that movie, that means a certain thing, like there's happiness coming or whatnot. And we don't always necessarily know that we know it, but we do. And so when it's off, it gets weird. And the consistency, especially if you're making a suite of, of videos or images that, that will need to link together, that helps using yeah, that visual I, shorthand. I, I love that because it's, it's about learning the language of, of the medium, right? Whether you're writing or using images or video, it's got a language and there's things that we've come to understand and you can break that, but it should be done with purpose. It should be done with reason. And like, and it's going to realize it might cause some dissonance. And, 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 and if you don't understand it, like go with that gut, like, Oh, something feels off here. Like it's not framed yeah. right. Or it doesn't feel right. And I think that goes getting back to, you know, what you said, having natural environments feels good. And then to what Andy said about, like, we want to be able, be able to kind of have purpose for everything. And if that something's out of, not there, and it's not feeling purposeful, it might clutter, it might distract and it, takes away from, from what we've yeah. got. So, well, Trisha, thank you so much for joining with me today. We're going to, we're going to keep things moving here. We're going to, uh, we've got our next set of guests here. We're going to got, we've got hard to believe four more guests. We're halfway through our show already. Um, but so thank you. If, if people wanted to reach out and connect with you, where's the best place to do that? Um, you can reach me on LinkedIn. Like I said, my last name is ransom, like a kidnap note. I'm wearing a hot pink shirt and kind of doing it. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, and if you want to stick around and, and join in either YouTube or LinkedIn's chat, we'd love to have you there, but uh, we know you're also very busy. So thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye everyone. Bye. Okay. So we're halfway through our eight tips today and it's, it, you know, wonderful tips already. I, again, I, if you're driving in your car, your, your commute's coming to an end and you're like, Oh, I'm going to pause it. You, you probably got a lot of value already. But with that said, We've got four more and our next guest, uh, she also, we've, we kind of sandwiched in the middle, our two guests that wanted to be here, but things ca came up and, and changed plans a little bit. So we asked her to, to make a quick video. This is, uh, Tracy Parrish and you know, Tracy's on, she is on my list of people to have back on the show as any of these people could come and fill a whole hour. Uh, but we're going to, we're going to listen to her, her tip and then we'll talk about it a little bit and then we'll get ready for our next guest with Mike Taylor. So let's listen to what Tracy Parrish's tip is. So I'm Tracy Parrish and I am an education technology specialist, which means I'm an instructional designer making e-learning courses. And I work in in the healthcare field where I have little to no budget. So my tip is that I often will uh, find Creative Commons images that I can use. I use Pix, uh, Pixels and Unsplash and, and other places like that. But I also use Wikimedia Commons and places like that where there's a Creative Commons license to it. So a couple of things that I do is I make sure that the license is either a Creative Commons that I have to give attribution to. So I make sure, do I have to give attribution to it? Is it something I'm allowed to modify or do I have to leave it the same as I fi find it? So if I can modify it, it means I can maybe crop out some of the background or I could blur out the background and just crop, crop images of it. So if I can modify the image, then what I like to do is be able to find images where I can use multiple pieces of it. So maybe there's more than one character in the photo, or maybe there is a character in the front and an office environment in the back. So I might do that. So I try to look at pictures. How can I use it in multiple scenarios, multiple ways, because I'm probably going to need to use that photo more than once. And then the other thing I do, like I said, 
really track down the creative commons. If it looks like it's too good to be true, that picture, it might be. So I have seen before there was an image of a small baby that just didn't seem right that it could be possibly creative commons. And it was, the person had put it on as a Creative Commons license and then changed it to a copyright. And that Creative Commons license stays with the image or the um, piece of media that it's put on indefinitely. You can't retract that. So I thought, no, this person really didn't want to have it that way. And I didn't use it. I found something else. So just be mindful of that when you're looking for uh, free images that you can reuse and there's so many out there there's lots that are happening there's more and more uh, images of um, multicultural images multi backgrounds uh, diversity intermixed marriages um, and all in intermixed families and so many different ones that you can find so that would be my tip to use Awesome. So Tracy's tip is really to use those Creative Commons uh, libraries. And, and in fact, what we're going to do in, in the chat, and we'll put this in the show notes as well and on the YouTube on, on the, for the podcast, she provided me with a link to share with you all that has a ton of resources, like 70 plus resources where you can go find Creative Commons media. And like, you, like she said, though, there's some caveats with it, right? Like free is good, but free is not it has sometimes like you have to be careful about what you're doing because you don't want to violate the copyright. So, you know, make sure you can use it and can you modify it? Can you not modify it? Can you do, you, you know, what was the intent behind it? Did someone actually not want it to be used? Uh, and, and with that story that she shared. So I think this is a really great resource, especially I know a lot of instructional designers, trainers, com small, smaller companies are like, oh my gosh, paying a hundred, two hundred dollars for one image seems cost prohibitive and they're not going to be able to get the permission to do that. But there are so many great sites out there. I know, uh, I love unsplash.com. It's a, a photo site. Um, I have two photos up there. I think that one of them's a picture of the uh, tower bridge in London. That's it's got a few views. It's pretty cool. Uh, but that's a really great resource for free. If, if you want like a low cost, I'll say low cost alternative that's been very affordable, uh, the TechSmith Asset Library is good. It's all able to be used in your media and whatever you're creating. So it's got a cost to it and it's an annual subscription, but it also access, gives you access to images, photos, video, some really cool Camtasia stuff, as well as um, music and some sound effects and things like that. So there's, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to use everything that's Creative Commons, but if you're looking for cheap, fast, and free, do it, but make sure you're doing the work to make sure it's, it's being used appropriately. So with that said, uh, thank you, Tracy, for being willing to come on, and we're just going to keep rolling through here because our next guest is in the queue. He's waiting uh, to come on. He's actually was one of our earliest guests on the podcast. Uh, I think, I, I don't know exactly. Jason was number one for the first episode. Mike was not too far behind, or maybe he was just before the podcast, but we love having him on the show. Welcome to our, the visual lounge, Mike Taylor. Oh, that's not Mike. You're not Mike. Hang on. <laughs> hey, everybody. Let's grab Mike. <laughs> we're we're going to switch. The, where's Mike at? <laughs> Wait a minute. Who's on first? I don't know. Right, exactly. I, I'm working on Mike, it. You go. How about Mike, you go first? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, why are you not assigned? There you there's there's Mike, sort of. <laughs> Did I there's break Mike. something? I'm... No, you didn't break anything. I'm just I'm just getting to my breaking point here of organizing well, everything. So <laughs> I miss my calling as a software tester. I can break any system known to man, so there, there's good opportunities if, you, if that's what you can do. So, well, Mike, welcome. Now that you're on, we'll get to Leslie in just a minute. But, uh, Mike, thank you for being here. You you know the the premise of the show. It's your one best tip about creating images or video. So I'm just gonna let you run for a second as I recalculate my brain, and we'll hear from you. So, what do you got? For yeah, us? Ab absolutely. So, so I think this applies to to probably both images and video, and this is something that I think everyone has done. Even the, the best designers, you know, the famous people, all that sort of stuff is is create a swipe file. This is something I learned and it's been one of the most valuable lessons I picked up is whenever I see something that catches my eye that's a design, I snag it or I take a photo of it. If I my my phone, I'll take a picture of it. Our our local library, they have what I assume is keynote or PowerPoint running in the lobby of events and what's happening. And they have some really fantastic designers. So I'm forever in my library 
lobby snapping photos of the announcements board and people probably think I'm crazy, but you know, that's what I'm doing is like, Oh, I like this design. I've got an idea. I can take this concept and apply it to something I'm working on, or maybe I don't have a use for it yet, but I could see that being a great title slide or whatever the case might be. And I don't know about you, but I think it's probably a fairly common thing. It's super intimidating to open up whatever software and look at a blank page like this really tough. Um, so I, I have found having a library of that stuff, you know, if I need a title slide, I've got a folder of those. Like, oh, okay, this is what I'm going for. And this is matches the tone and the voice and the branding and all that sort of stuff. And it just gives you a really nice head start. Very rarely do, is it like it's identical, but it gives you that 75 or 80% and then you can tweak it and then you're off to the races usually from that point. Well, that's awesome. So I've got a question out of the gate for you because I love the idea of creating a swipe file and, and doing that, gathering those ideas. Cause I always see stuff. I'm like, Oh, that's really good. I like the design. I like how it interplays with color or whatever it might be. How do you keep it organized, Mike? Because <laughs> that's, the, seems to be the challenge. I, I, I have a phone full of pictures that I never touch or organize yet. You're asking me to add more. <laughs> so what do I do? Yeah. So eternal challenge, right. And I've, I've tried, you know, probably 2000 different options, but I think I've landed on something that's worked really, really well for me uh, there. I, and I don't know how to classify this as kind of a bookmarking app, but you can put files in there. You can put images in there. So I, I use a, a tool called bubble up. So bubble up with just one B, mm -hmm. you know, the internet companies, we've got to drop letters and vowels and stuff, but so it it's i uh, I've got a little browser plugin. If I see something, I just hit kick the button put it in a folder, right? And, and uh, if I'm on my phone, I can take it from there, just, you know, one or two taps and it's and it's in a place that I can find it. So I've just got this big, now once it gets in there, there's a lot of stuff um, and that's probably not as organized as it could, but it's all there and I can browse it. I can organize it. I have some subcategories, you know, title slides, list, list slides, whatever. And so that's a really nice thing that, um, you know, I've got this library of stuff that's relatively sorted and um, I can capture from anywhere and I can browse from anywhere. Yeah. Uh, well, I love that. And I, I see in the chat, someone suggesting if you're a Snagit user to use the Snagit uh, library tags, that would, be, you know, all this comes down to, I think is Mike, I'm not very organized as you can see by your entrance. Like I've got people going to wrong places, <laughs> but, uh, but it sounds like, like I love, but again, I love this idea because, you're right. The blank page is with any with video and we'll say even with video, right? It's so hard to start with a blank can, canvas blank timeline and be like, what do I put here? And uh, so I, I think that's this is a, this is a solid, like practical tip that anyone could start doing. Yeah, I think so. And and I think um, it doesn't make you any less of a designer to have an inspiration to, to, to start from. You know, like I said, you know, every artist ever has has been inspired or copied a style or something from somebody. So not stealing. It's very different from stealing. Right. This would be clear about that. I'm not I'm not I'm not going to steal all your stuff and put my name on it. Well, I, I wish I, I could. I, of course, we could just copy it. And, and steal it. But like I, I find it ironic. I think it was Steve Jobs who was quoting Picasso when he said, uh, good artists copy, great artists steal. Uh, so, you know, he, what did he do? He stole Picasso's, uh, but so I love this. And, and again, the idea is not to make an, a duplicate. It is to be inspired by and, and to mimic, you know, mimic appropriately. So this is, this is fantastic. Yeah. It, uh, if you haven't seen another, uh, great book, Austin Cleon has steal like an artist, a really fantastic book on that same concept. So if anybody's curious, that's worth checking it out from your library. Absolutely. Well, Mike, are you going to stick around for a, another minute or two? Yeah, sure. Happy to stick around. Okay. So we got this great tip. Our next guest who you already had a, a sneak peek of is, is we're going to bring on, man, I'm just, I'm just dying here. This, this is Kath. We're going to bring on Leslie Chamberlain and let's see if everyone comes in. There we go. Leslie. Hey, yay. Hey everybody. <laughs> Leslie meet Mike, Mike meet Leslie. We're... Hi Mike. I love that tip. It just, it reminds me of all those great artists who, had work underneath their work and you have the x-rays where you can see the old versions and yeah. the new versions. Absolutely. I love that. I'm going to use that. 
<laughs> so, so Leslie, uh, you're a new uh, face to the uh, Visual Lounge. We haven't had you on yes. here, so please take a second to introduce yourself. Sure. Hey, everybody. I'm Leslie Chamberlain. I am the Senior Director of Client Experience at an organization called Career Plug. So it is an applicant tracking system, and we help folks get the right hires, with the right people in the right seat. So it's it's a good time. <laughs> yeah. So so Leslie, I'm I'm guessing there's lots of images and videos that your teams are using all the time to communicate with customers and so forth. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially as we are building up more of our customer education team and building up more materials, and we're looking working a lot more on our onboarding here in this quarter and really solidifying it, turning it into this, you know, beautiful gemstone of an onboarding process. And yeah, videos all the time, videos, videos and images galore. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, let's, let's hear your one best tip for us about creating or using images or video. Yes. My one best tip is what I call bullets over scripts. And it is a tip that I received actually from an effective business communication professor at DePaul University, where I used to work. And he's one of my mentors, Dr. Joel Whalen. I'll put his name out there in the world. He's a good dude. Um, and this is what he talks about, even in presentation form, even, um, but of course, here in any videos you're doing, we're not great actors. None of us are, none of us are Tom Hanks. None of us are Meryl Streep, right? And humans, we have this great ability to know that. So we can tell when something doesn't feel authentic. We can tell when something doesn't feel right. So by using scripts for your videos, you're, you're kind of putting yourself in, in not your best light and people can tell that. So starting with, yeah, script your first line, script what you're going to say at first to get people started and script your call to action for sure. You have the final thing you're going to say, but everything else in between, give yourself bullet points. This is a point I want to address and you're an expert. You all know your products. You all know the work you do. So you can speak to it and speak from the heart and be authentic. And the more authentic you are, the more it's going to connect with your learners, the more it's going to connect with your clients and your customers, and they're going to have an attraction and a connection to you. So that's my call to action to everyone is bullets over scripts. I love that. You did you script that bullets over script? <laughs> <laughs> I scripted That's that. The... Right, it's Perfect. right there. It's right there on my, on my screen. <laughs> so, 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 Mike, uh, I know you do. Your your presentation. You do a lot of presentations. I'm curious your your thoughts about Leslie's tip. Yeah, I don't know if if it came through or not, but you know, I, my head's over here. A lot of up and down. <laughs> yes, yes. Preach it, preach it, preach it for sure. Uh, <laughs> especially, you know. Yes, absolutely. And uh, that, th this has been such great tips, but you know, that's right up there with, with among the contenders for the best as well. I'll take it. I'll take that every day of the week, Mike. Thanks for that. <laughs> so, so one thing I, I, I think about an experience that I had is we were doing this series of, it was like 30 videos and it's, a, mm -hmm. so 30 videos and they're all short, like one to two minutes, right? And, but right. it's really dense. And I, what I find is sometimes there's very specific information, especially when you're doing teaching software, right? Right. And so I did script those 30 videos and you can tell, yeah. uh, you know, I was reading from a teleprompter. You can see a little bit of the eye move. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the thing that we did after that is really interesting. Uh, the guy I was working with, he said to me like, Hey, uh, you know, I said, I think there's a shorter video. Can we just, can we go through these like nine tips I've got? And he's like, yes. And it wasn't scripted out, but the thing he's like, he's like really pounded on and kind of like be energetic. He's like, that's not you're, you're flat. And he just said, pour in your energy. And we, we did that and we really, this awesome video came out of it. And it's not really, I take, give the editors all the credit cause it's fast, it's snappy and it's nine tips about creating screen video. But I think it was to your point that it, it wasn't the scripted. It was, and it was just like pour everything I had into it. Cause the camera just kind of like, yeah, you think you're energetic. Yeah, no, 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 no. You're not coming through. I got it. Like there's seven layers you got to get through before the energy you're, you're really feeling it. So I nice. love this tip. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. It's my, it's my go-to. It's my go-to. I think it's, I think it's, you know, one of those, uh, baseline root, you know, floors for really good, uh, customer education content is bullets, not scripts. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right, Mike, we're going to, we've got our next guest is, is in the, the waiting room. So Mike, if, if either of you want to drop, you can, but Mike, where can people find you? Uh, I'm pretty easy to find just about everywhere. So my website is uh, mike-taylor.org. Uh, pretty active on LinkedIn and, and Twitter at tmiket. So if you have any questions or, or anything, happy to 
happy to happy to take them. And always put out great. <laughs> like sharing great resources. So follow Mike if you want to learn more and see what other people are doing. Cause I think his swipe file just gets shared with us, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I, learning out loud, right, Matt? Abs absolutely. And, and Leslie, just, you, you're welcome to stick around for, uh, oh, yeah. you know, as, as we have our next guest, but I'm curious, uh, where can people find you if they, they want to connect? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm right there on LinkedIn, Leslie Chamberlain. I, I work for career plug. You can find me right on there. I'm excited to connect with all of you. Also, I'm, I'm pretty active on the customereducation.org uh, community. So please reach out to me there as well. I mentorship is uh, it's actually my, my dissertation is on mentorship. So I love that connection with folks. It is, it feeds me and I'd, I'd love to connect with all of you. Yeah. And that's customereducation.org for anyone that doesn't know. It's a great community for customer education professionals. I, I learn so much just from reading, not super active, like typing stuff a lot, but I'm yeah. always learning and always happy to share uh, there yeah. as well. So it's a great community. All right. Well, Mike, thank you so much. I'm going to switch over to you. Bring, we're going to bring in our next guest, Dave Darrington. Look at that. Hey. Mike, you're welcome. To, he's, he's gone. He's like, I'm kicking me out. <laughs> 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 Dave, welcome. <laughs> you're at the end of, of what I, it feels like about five minute long episode for me because uh, we've been going back to back to back. So uh, take a second. We've been, you, you have been on the show before. Will you take a second to introduce yourself, though? Yeah, sure. Um, just trying to get my volume and my kit all set up here. Uh, if you don't know me already, I've been, I've been out there a lot. I'm Dave Darrington. I am currently, I have two hats and I brought my lab coat today to emphasize and my wonderful shirt. Hey, right? look See at that. We're twinsies. Hey, twinsies. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that I do is uh, with my co-host and partner, Adam Evermescu, partner in crime for customer education, uh, we run C-Lab, the customer education laboratory. That's at customer.education. Uh, that has been documenting and sharing transparently and vulnerably our journey through learning what customer education is about. And there's a lot of content and Matt, you know, you're in there. We've, we've been working with you for a long time. We really respect our relationship here that, you know, the angle that I really like about with Texma is we use your products and all the time in customer education. Um, let me speak to where I'm at now. I'm at, at service rocket where we are building the first ever customer education as a service organization. What that means is if you need help, you need advice, you want to learn customer education, we do workshops, we do work, we do it all, instructional design and training. So it's super exciting. Uh, if any of the audience uh, wants to talk to me, that's at servicerocket.com and you can find me there. Um, but yeah, I've been out here in customer education for about seven years now formally and Learn, and my mission is to find the others. So if you're out there and you're trying to learn about customer education and, and you haven't connected yet, I want to connect with you. I want to learn from you. I'm going to share what I know. We're making this a really cool space and Texmas right there with us. In fact, you're a, a sponsor of the C-Lab podcast, which is amazing. And I'm super yeah. proud to have you. We're, we're happy to do it too, because uh, we believe in this stuff. We, guys, we believe in this stuff that we're talking about. <laughs> and we have our own slant on customer education, obviously, a lot of video and image stuff, but I mean, there's lots of room. There's lots of room in there. So, well, well Dave, thanks for being here. Uh, you know, we've said it before, but you get your you get your time now. You get your one tip for making better uh, image or video. So what, oh. what, teach us, help us to be better. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm doing now. And this is funny because even though I'm the director and I'm you know, in strategy and stuff, I still use Camtasia every day, right? That's hard to even admit. And why, how, what am I doing? I'm doing everything from using it for internal stuff. Like I'll record a quick video, trim it, cut it, do like I did an enablement session on customer education for a client. And that was really good material. And someone said, can we share that? I'm like, yep, grab the video out. And then I did some stuff too. What did I do? That's what's important. So what, what I love to do is I have a, I have a template for a lot of the things that I work with because what my mission is to get something out there fast, super fast. Right. And I don't care about quality. Actually I do, but there's things that I will not prioritize over speed. Like, man, if I'm trying to train you on something and you're in pain and you're mad and you're, you might turn. Okay. I got to get something done and get out here. I can't be a perfectionist. Right but I can be, and that's what I want to talk about right now. So 
one of the tools that I've really started to grow, to love with, uh, fall in love with is complementary to Camtasia and Snagit. It's, you know, I use things like Canva or heck, I, I have a bunch of products where I will stage some content. What I like about Canva right now and what's really helping me out with my design and, and look, I'm not a designer. I am no way a graphic person. Heck, I'm not a video person. I've picked this all up on my own because it's just easy to do with your products. So what I'll do now, <laughs> I'm giving you a testimonial. <laughs> so what I, uh, here, here's what I do now. Like, I love this show and I'm using another platform that's not Ecamm, but I'm using um, what's it called. Uh, oh, I always do this. I get talking and then I forget about it. I'll, I'll remember it. Um, StreamYard. Um, StreamYard. StreamYard. Say, thank, thank you. Um, so how do I like the thing about StreamYard is it's I have to embed all the, the, the assets and stuff, but then I'll take that video off and, and I'll bring it down into Camtasia and then I'll edit it and I'll put it back up and stream it live somewhere else. Right. So there's all these things I'll do. I will make third, you know, lower thirds now and I'll have a template sitting there and I go, boom, grab that. Good. Put it in Camtasia, throw it over. Okay. I'll make like a little video transition or something like that in Canva or some other product, grab it, download it, throw it in Camtasia, put it on my timeline. I will, and, and I'm fluidly like doing this kind of stuff. And this, the fact that I have very simple templates that I can boom, 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 quickly spin out. And guess what? My marketing team helped me out with that. They saw what I was doing too, because I was doing this show called Working Out Loud, which is the video version of what I do for C-Lab. And they said, can we help? I'm like, <laughs> yes, what are you gonna do? And they go, oh, I have these great ideas. So they went off and they took the templates that I have and came back with these wonderful templates that I could never have made myself. And then they shared them with me and now I can go back and I can use them fluidly, right? Yeah. So that, that's, my, that's my thing. I can quickly, I have all these things staged. I have a folder on my desktop. I have Camtasia sitting there for me. And now I'm actually, also putting some of those in permanently into like templates for Camtasia, right? So now I have my stock default template where I go to do a video, because I'll do videos different ways. Sometimes I'll use StreamYard, sometimes I'll, I'll record in Zoom, but when I record in Zoom, that's really where this comes into play. Yeah. Why would I do Zoom as opposed to StreamYard? Well, that's, I might've got like, I've gone done talk somewhere and I recorded it, or I just did a video on Zoom or whatever. So I can take that couple together real quick and it looks the same. Now I've got like the same kind of thing, but I've come in from a different angle. So that's the power of templates and snippets and things like that. You don't have to be a pro enlist your army of professionals like marketing folks, you know, or pay a contractor to make some of this stuff up. And then you, you like me, I don't have time for this stuff. I do it every day because it's easy. And I use these, these templates to make my job easier. Well, well, I love it. First of all, thank you for the, all the testimonials. And, uh, but I, I think there's something really powerful. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, it, I think it's really powerful though, because not only now that you're getting this set up, it's then it scales, right? All those things that you've made, you can pass them on to others on your team and they can do, yeah. you know, if you have Camtasia templates, you can do these things. So it doesn't have to be just a one person. Like it works well as a team as, as you get these standards in place, but it goes back to all these other things we've been talking about consistency and thinking about all how these pieces play together. So Leslie, I, I'm curious to get your, I, I love doing this to people. So we, we get a perspective. The last guest gets to give their like, Hey, what would you say yeah. in addition to, or, uh, against maybe, or maybe not anything that Dave said? Oh, against, how would I, why would I speak against Dave? You wouldn't. <laughs> I, I, we're building drama on the show. <laughs> no, what actually, what that, what came to mind for me was, um, I'm going to be speaking pretty soon. I'm inviting. Uh, product marketing managers and customer education managers to come together in the customer education community and see how what's this what's this friction about and how we can work together more often. And Dave, that's such a good idea, right? What how can we work together to create these templates Please. to give it the view that the product product marketing managers want and and get their eye and get their buy in with it as well. I I love when we can work together on that. So thanks, Dave. That's a great one. I, I cool. love how that. That would be great. So I'm not going to speak against Dave, Matt. <laughs> I know. I know. But it's good to you should, ratings. though. If you differ opinion like that, if you know, I differ, what, but the strength I, but is, I, we have different opinions it. and we have to share I dig them. It. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I love it. I love that's a great one. Whew. Well, thank you both for being here. Dave, uh, I want to make sure we give you a shot. So you mentioned a couple things. Customer, It's customer.com 
education. That's like customer. So that's the whole website. So I don't want people mm-hmm. adding a dot. That's a, it made it really easy. Um, yes. Customer.education, the C-Lab, C-Lab uh, some people call it CE Lab. It's think about underneath the wall, you know, the old uh, Cartoon Network show now, the C- C-Lab 2021. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how you pronounce it. Uh, yeah, it's C-Lab customer.education. You can't get a better domain. We're there. And we're at the confluence of all this stuff. I know, I know the um, customer education org was mentioned. What we're trying to do is take that next level where the people we're engaging with, the people we're working with, you're going to start seeing some big changes there soon. Uh, we have sponsorships. Again, I said you were one of them. We're, we're going to be bringing in new voices and a whole lot of people uh, that are better than me, you know, that are going to be talking on a regular basis. So stay tuned. Watch that. If you don't follow it already, a lot of people, it's really weird for me because people come up to me and say, hey, Dave, I'm a fan of your podcast. Who are you? I don't know who you are. This is weird. So it's been it's been wonderful. If you want to be on that show, anybody that's in the audience and want to talk about your experiences in customer education, we're working to find the others, right? You, the, the people that are out there doing this job and don't know it, you have, an, you have a fam. Um, other, also, I'm at, um, now I can get, get my service rocket link up. Uh, here it is. Um, we have customer education services and I'll put my, we're going to put a link here. Um, if you drop it in our little chat, uh, that's, I can put it onto for everybody to get to it. So, I'll okay. All right. There it is. There it is. Um, that link right there will take you to my program at service rocket. And, and the deal is look, everybody customer education. The, the reason I love TechSmith and your products is because we're all talking the same language. That language is scale, speed, go to market. We're talking the language of success. We're talking the language, and and, and this is the intersection between our world and the world of YouTube and TikTok and stuff like that. And people think I'm nuts for saying TikTok. Education is everywhere. But we are, my mission and my passion is to utilize technologies, tools that allow for speed. You know, that's why I said templates and things like that. Our instructional designers have to work at blindingly fast rates. So I know this is really cool. If you want to reach out to me, connect with me, I'm happy to talk to you. If you've got projects you need help with, if you need advice, if you just want to have a therapy session, I'm your guy. <laughs> so come talk to me. I, I, talk, I do that every day. I talk to people who are struggling and challenging and trying to figure their way through this mess of insanity because they're doing things in maybe slow and unwieldy ways because they don't know. And that's, we've learned these the hard way by you know, and now we have a great network. Leslie is good, good to talk to you too. And you're part of our network and part of our fam. Um, that's so that's my speech. Well, thank you both once again for joining us uh, on the visual lounge. Oh, we did it. We made it. And we've got, uh, I've got two minutes to spare. So, uh, Dave Darrington, Leslie Chamberlain, thank you so much for being our final closing guest here today. And, uh, with that said, I just want to wrap up here by saying, Hopefully you took away out of all these tips, hopefully you took away something that is of value, something that you can apply to the work that you're doing, whether you're making images or video or just thinking about how you're going to do that. We heard some great tips and maybe to help scale up, get speed, uh, you know, how to make it look better. So it's all really important. And we're going to end as we always end on the show, of course, that whatever you're doing, wherever you are, we hope that you take a little bit of time, apply one of these tips or some other tip that you've heard today and level up every single day. And we'll be back next week with a great episode with Cassie Labori. We're gonna be actually building the video that we planned to make a couple weeks ago. Uh, So we did all the planning before and now we're gonna be actually building that out. We'll see you then. Thanks everybody.